Here's the problem with writing NPCs. When you're writing an NPC, you want them to be memorable. You want them to make the world feel real and engaging and populated. We want to pour our voice into them as they deliver amazing plot twists that change everything for the party. And with all those expectations, it's easy to start picturing your NPCs as a folder of cutscenes. But when you bring that folder and dump it into your game, you are now railroading. Playing PCs has actually misequipped us for prepping NPCs. Because PCs basically are a folder full of cutscenes that your players bring to the table and they will really not hurt the game by dumping them out. Not usually, there's still a matter of taste and timing and respecting the group. But NPCs are something fundamentally different. We all know that NPCs are supposed to get less of the spotlight than the PCs. That's a maxim we've all heard in some shape or form. But that's not really specific enough. What we should be thinking is PCs are active, NPCs are passive, always, even when they appear to be in control of the scene. So that's why I said writing NPCs is a paradox. Your prep needs to allow them to appear to be in control of the scene, even though the scene is still constructed to let the PCs be in control. So writing NPCs is a paradox. A good NPC lets the players drive the scene, while appearing to drive the scene himself. So how do you do it? Well, you start prepping the right things. This video isn't how to write an NPC from a literary drama standpoint of what makes a good character. There are plenty of videos about that. This is my prep method of how to take that and write it down in a way that works at the table. And I'll show that format in a second, but the important thing is, instead of viewing your NPCs as a folder full of cutscenes, you need to picture them as an is, a does, and a has. Because every character in fiction or in an RPG is something, does something, and has something. So the form that I use, and as always, you can download this in the description in a grayer font face so you can write over it, has an is column with a description. What do your PCs actually see? Put down their voice. You don't want to be making that up at the table. You want to go into this with a voice that matches their role in the story. Below that it has personality. You may not really refer to that in the game, but this is a good place to brainstorm it. And it has origin. Again, mostly for you, because that backstory you came up with for this person may never be relevant at the table, but at least you get to express it somewhere. Then below that we have maybe the most important thing that an NPC is, is what are they a believer in? How do they view the world? What do they believe about the game world and the other NPCs that may or may not be true, but is going to define the kind of person that this is. And I give that a nice big workspace here to jot down notes because I found that once you have this, you can actually ad-lib this stuff if you have to. Moving over to the does column, you got approaches. This is a concept I took from Fate Accelerated. How does this character do what they do? Are they sneaky? Are they seductive? forceful, manipulative. Just writing down a single adjective like that and having it in your back pocket is one of these prep power tools that'll help you ad-lib things that feel like they're coming from a very fleshed out character without you having to write it as a cutscene ahead of time. And underneath that, I like to give a lot of space for moves. What does this NPC do? And a move might be a skill. I don't really give NPCs skill ratings. If they've got a skill, they're gonna use the skill to move the story forward. That's kind of how NPCs work in stories. Or it could just be a story-altering thing that I want them to be able to do once in this campaign. And if any of that does involve skill ratings or combat stats, if this is a fighting NPC, I put that down here in mechanics. And then over in the has column, we got a nice general space for inventory, but the has column actually has something more important and more abstract in it. And that is what are the plot points that they control? What is their first meeting? That's like a story scene that he has in his pocket, ready to go at all times. Because I think of an NPC as having the plot points that they most closely impact. Get this list of things to say. That's something else that, from a story perspective, your NPC has. Then you got the plot points and drama points you want them to kick off. And the difference in my prep is a plot point turns the story in a new direction, and a drama point just complicates whatever's currently going on. So this is a guide to who this NPC is at all times, how they act during ad-libbed situations, and a list of not ad-libbed stuff that you'd like to maybe do through them. 
Writing it down this way, for me, makes an NPC more of a flexible tool for advancing the plot, rather than something I have to work in because it's just so cool. Now filling in most of these fields will usually make a better NPC in the first place, but for a discussion on what makes an NPC good, check out this video. If you like this format, check out the rest of this playlist or leave me a comment with what game component you would like me to do next. Be sure to hit that subscriber bell for more prep tips. Until next time, stay creative.